But one of the reasons why I was so excited is about A Wrinkle in Time, because the message is that the darkness is spreading so fast these days. You must become a warrior of the light. And the reason that's so meaningful to me is because that's how I've led my whole life. For these times, the darkness is there to show you your light. Look at what has happened. So if you put the focus on, look at what happened with the darkness that showed up in Parkland and the darkness that showed up on the streets of Ferguson and the darkness that showed up in many, 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 many homes in Chicago with shootings and uh, senseless murders. It brings out the best in people. It brings out the best. And so that's what it's there. We live on a planet where there is darkness and light. I deeply believe is not that do unto others as you would have them do unto you. What you do is already done. That moment in The Color Purple where she says, everything you ever tried to do to me, already done to you. So the law, the third law of motion of physics says that what you're putting out is coming back all the time, regardless of whether you know it or acknowledge it or not. I say to the, my girls all of the time that your real work is to figure out where your power base is and to work on the alignment of your personality, your gifts that you have to give with the real reason why you're here. That's, that's the number one thing you have to do is to work on yourself and to fill yourself up and keep your cup full. Keep yourself full. Now, I used to be afraid of that. I used to be afraid, particularly from people who say, oh, she, she's so full of herself. Mm, she's so full of herself. And now I embrace it. I, I consider it a compliment that I am full of myself. Because you only when you're full, I'm full, I'm overflowing, my cup runneth over. I have so much, I have so much to offer and so much to give. And I am not afraid of honoring myself. You know, it's miraculous when you think about it. My life is fueled by my being and the being fuels the doing. So I come from a centered place. I come from a focused place. I come from compassion. I come from a willingness to understand and to be understood. And I come from wanting to, to connect. I mean, the secret of that show for 25 years is that people could see themselves in me. All over the world, they could see themselves in me. And even as I became more and more financially successful, which was a big surprise to me. I was like, oh my God, this is so exciting. But what, what I realized is through the whole process, because I'm grounded in my own self, that although I could have more shoes, my feet stayed on the ground, although I was wearing better shoes. These are kind of cute today too. Uh, so I could keep my feet on the ground, even though I could get more shoes. And I could understand, I could understand that it really was because I was grounded. I've, I've done the, was doing and continue to this day to do the consciousness work. I work at staying awake. The reason why I was number one for 25 years is because I figured out early on, there is no story anybody has ever heard that somebody else hasn't experienced nothing and I also figured out probably maybe the first or second year that all pain is the same that a mother in Somalia feels the same way as a mother in Seattle when she loses her child and the common denominator in the human experience is our emotions and our feelings and the more vulnerable and open you are willing to be with your story the more actual understanding you create with other people and the more powerful you become. People don't think less of you for sharing your story. They think more of you for having the courage to share it. What inspired me was and is, continues to be, what continues to inspire me is a primal and fundamental desire to fulfill the highest expression of myself as a human being. 
I don't want to die not having completely burnt out every single possibility of my humanity. I just, I just want to, I, when, when, when I leave this planet, I want everybody to say, you did that, used it all up. Not another thing I could do. There wasn't another person I could have given of myself to. There wasn't another deed I could have done. There wasn't anything that you just want to, you want to say, I want to fill it up. You want to take this whole human existence, which when you think about it, Godfrey, it's really pretty damn miraculous. It is. It is. It is. When you think about what it means to be a human being on the planet Earth right now, that's pretty awesome. So I just want to, I want, I want to, I want to take that to the max. Mm. I want to say, no need to come back as a human. The day, first day I went to school, I was in a classroom. By the time I was, uh, you know, six years old, didn't go to school till I was six years old because I was living with my grandmother at that time. Sure. But she had taught me how to read, read the Bible, Bible stories. So I went into the classroom knowing Nicodemus, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I could spell all of those words. I thought I was, you know, I was preaching to the, to my kindergarten teacher. You know about <laughs> so she was like, who is this girl? <laughs> so I was never placed in an environment where I was ever made to feel inferior. I always felt like I'm the smartest kid in this room. And because I was never placed in it, never put in a position where I was made to feel less than, sure. I didn't grow up feeling less than, you know? And the rest, as they say, is history. And the rest, they say, is history. Okay. And it's all about what you believe. You know, I say this to uh, when I, I do something on my network now called Life Class. The fundamental key to success is what you believe is true for yourself, not what you want, not what you desire. It's what do you believe? You know, you can say, I want to, I want to be the most successful person in the world. Yeah. But if you believe that there's a glass ceiling and you're going to have a hard time kicking through that glass ceiling, Keep us. you would be defined by the glass ceiling. And um, the great beauty and gift of my life is that I was never defined by the box that other people tried to put me in. The energy of your intention is what determines your life. Most people don't think about their intention. They just think about what they want to do. Most people don't think about why they want to do it. But what's going to come back to you, the energy that's going to come back to you, is the real why of why you did it. What drives you to keep working so hard? You could, you know, you and I are in the 60s category. And so when you're in your 60s, you know you've lived more than you're going to live, yeah. realistically. So when you realize you've lived more than you're going to live, you can say, why not relax a little bit? Why not just ease up? Why have you decided to even work harder than you did before? Because I think, David, that everybody, you know, the thing that works for me all these years, whether it was the magazine or, which I still have, or whether it was the show, I could, I understood that there's a common denominator in the human experience. And I want the same thing you want, which is the same thing you want and you want. What we all want is to be able to live out the truest, highest expression of ourselves as a human being. That doesn't end until you take your last breath. What is the truest, highest vision that you hold for yourself? No matter where you are in your life, there's always the next level. There's always the next level to the last breath. So I feel that I always knew that I would get be done with the show when I felt like, oh, I've said as much as I could say here on this platform. And then how will I be used? If there were, if there were a theme song to my life, Amazing Grace would be one of them. So I feel that until you have used your value as a human being, you're not done. My biggest frustration is not just with young women. My biggest frustration is also with young men, young people who think that, and I have a lot of this with my girls in college, they think that success is supposed to happen like that. Yeah. They think that there isn't a process to it. They think that they're supposed to come out of college and have their brand. And um, I recognize now that I am a brand, but I was resistant to being called a brand for many years because I was like, I'm a brand, I'm not a brand, I'm, I'm a person. But how I got to be a brand was not trying to be a brand. How I got to be a brand was every day making choices 
that felt like this is the right move, now that's the right move, and now that's the next right move, the next right move. And so my frustration with young women and young men is that they think it's supposed to happen like this, and they don't understand that there's a process to I always understood that there really was no difference between me and the audience. At times, I might have had better shoes, but at the core, the core of, of, of what really matters, that we are the same. And you know how I know that? Because all of us are seeking the same thing. You're here at this fabulous school, and we'll go out into the world and each pursue based upon what you believe your talents are, what your skills are, maybe your gifts are, but you're seeking the same thing. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. That's what you're looking for. The highest, truest expression of yourself as a human being. And because I understand that, I understand that if you're working in a bakery and that's where you want to be, and that may be, the, that may be what you always wanted to do is to bake pies for people or bake cakes for people or to offer your gift, then, then that's, that's for you. And there's no difference between you and me, except that's, how, that's your platform, that's your show every day. So my understanding of that has allowed me to, you know, everyone. To, to, to reach everyone. And, and there's no way that you wouldn't, because that's, that's what I truly feel. The way through the challenge is to get still and ask yourself, what is the next right move? Not think about, oh, I got all of this to do. What is the next right move? And then from that space, make the next right move and the next right move. And not to be overwhelmed by it because you know your life is bigger than that one moment. You know you're not defined by what somebody says is a failure for you because failure is just there to point you in a different direction. <laughs>